Consumption of bottled water is expected to overtake soda by 2017. We found one small cap water company that has grown 133% annually and the CEO expects their flagship product to become number one in alkaline bottled water sales by the end of this year. To find out more about how you can partner with a company on the verge of potentially being the next water giant, visit crushthestreet.com slash water. Well, hello everyone and welcome into crushthestreet.com. My name is Kenneth Amaduri and we got a really interesting show for you today. We're going to be talking about water. As many of you are concerned about a falling U.S. dollar, hyperinflation, or just inflation in general, the Federal Reserve and the reckless government. You know, you hear a lot about gold and precious metals and putting your money there. But we have a special guest today who's going to talk about the water commodity. My guest, and you'll recognize the last name because he's the son of Jim Rickards. His name is Scott Rickards, and he's the president and CEO and co-founder of Water Fund LLC. This is a firm dedicated to water risk management, and he's built the first water cost index, and he says that water could be the next big hot commodity. So we are going to talk about how water scarcity can be a benefit to your portfolio. So, uh, Scott, first of all, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Ken. I appreciate it. Scott, I live in SoCal, as I was telling you a little bit before we hit record here, and we're in the middle of a historic drought. Water scarcity, how can this affect someone's portfolio? The longer term problem, which is really um, a, a population versus uh, you know, water resources problem. Uh, bringing water from where it is uh, plentiful to where it is scarce is a very expensive proposition. Um, and that, that kind of gets you to some of the investment opportunities um, because it's all related to, uh, you know, how do I own water producing assets that will rise in value um, as water scarcity becomes a bigger and bigger problem. Um, and, and for investors to position themselves in that way and to think about it that way uh, is a good starting point. Okay, so talking about water, I mean, we have the government just so injected into this utility, this need that people have. What should water be priced at with what's going on with the whole drought? And, you know, certain areas have a, an abundance of water. Other areas are parched, as you said. I mean, how, how does someone play the water game? I mean, it's... In certain areas, they have an abundance of water, and maybe water should be cheap where they are. And in other areas where it, there's a drought and maybe people shouldn't be living, it's also cheap. How, how does this whole dynamic play out for someone who wants to invest in it? And do you see water repricing itself over the years? Well, can you, you've hit on all of the difficulties of, of water as an asset class. Um, you know, clearly, it, water's intuitive. We all we all need it. We all drink it. Um, we all pay for it in some way through our water bill or through our, you know, the, the, the food we buy at the store. Uh, so it, water is as intuitive as it gets as far as natural resources. Uh, but you've hit on all of the issues in terms of pricing and mispricing uh, as, as to, you know, as to why water. Today, it's, it's hard to really call it a commodity because you know, no one trades it. I can't go in the market and, and buy some or sell some. Uh, so, you know, is it is it really in a category alongside um, you know all those other commodities that are traded? No, but I would say uh, that does, certainly doesn't make it less valuable, and it's probably even you know more valuable. Uh, I would argue than um, uh, the whole energy complex, um, and the reason is it's more critical uh, to growth. Um, and that's where that, that's how investors have to think about the asset class. And secondly. How do you how do you then begin allocating capital to it? Uh, what are the opportunities? Uh, typically, and, uh, until now, it's really been an equity story, a technology story. Um, in, investors have had the opportunity to um, to allocate to a few ETFs in the market, which uh, are generally large cap tech stocks, uh, you know, companies like GE and Siemens. Um, that, in, in my view, isn't really a a pure play on the value of water. Um, you know, the value of water 
is 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 a you know is something else, and it's rising a lot faster than whatever GE uh, GE stock is doing. Um, so that's what I want to be in if I'm an investor. I want to be in the you know the, the actual value of the underlying uh, resource. What's that worth, and how can I um, invest in that? Um, so you know, as Californians well know, the price we pay in our water bill is not reflective of the actual value or the cost of producing that water. Uh, so what, what, what my company's done is we figured out what the actual production cost is and then what's the differential between how, you know, how little we pay and how much that actually is. And the answer is it's pretty, that, that gap is pretty big. Um, so that's why you know, the, the, mis, the underpricing of water um, is, is really what's holding back the industry from bringing forward all, all the solutions that it has but can't bring to market because the price isn't right. Um, so I would advise investors to seek out those opportunities where, where the, the customer, whoever it may be, um, a mining company, an oil company, uh, individual consumers, uh, are paying the right price. And if you're invested in those projects, those assets, where the, the, the off-taker of the water is paying the right price, it's a, it's a fabulous investment. Um, have, but most of the time, you know, 90% of the time, we're talking about water assets where the price is not where it needs to be. It's below production cost. Um, so that's what makes water a very difficult and complicated asset class, despite being, you know, one of the most intuitive things we all, we all know about. Yeah, it does seem like a, a complex thing to value, which is leading me to my next question i'm just curious how does the water cost index work what exactly does it track and how does an investor profit off of what the real price of water should be if it's all manipulated um great great question um with, with respect to the index the um we strip out all the subsidies so you know in, in california uh, for example, there are huge interest subsidies on water utility debt. Uh, we, you know, that's that's a that's a freebie um, from the state of California. There, are, you know, all over the, you know, around the world, there are energy subsidies are the most common one, um, and we plug those back in to reflect an actual you know market rate for energy. Um, so we, what we do is we count every dollar that's actually spent by the entity producing the water. Um, so, you know, Metropolitan Water, in the case of LA, uh, is the wholesaler. We measure everything that it costs to, um, to, to source and distribute the water. And then uh, we throw back in the subsidies, um, whatever they may be, and, and you know, however we're able to identify them. So we come up with what's basically the most, the most accurate, you know, the, the best estimate out there of the real dollar value of the water. Uh, on a on a unit per unit basis, um, so that's how the index is calculated, um, and with and with respect to uh, sorry that's how that's how we estimate all the costs, and then we also take into account obviously all the water that's delivered to customers. So if you have a water network that loses half of its water, we don't count the water that gets lost because it doesn't doesn't do anybody any good to lose half your water. Um, so if you're, if you're a utility that's very leaky, you're penalized uh, in our index. Um, so, you know, with respect to how do you then invest in that, uh, the answer is we, we've screened out opportunities all over the world where the, 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 the price that's being paid for the water meets or exceeds what our index says. Uh, so that's primarily led us to places like the Middle East, uh, particularly places like Saudi Arabia, um, Qatar. Uh, places that that highly value water, they don't have any of it, and they're able to pay uh, the you know the the right price. And so that those are those are great assets to be invested in. Um, but as I said at the beginning, it's not it's not obvious that that's you know just looking at the water world that, that that's where you want to be. Uh, it took us a long time to figure out where those opportunities are. Um, and I would say California, uh, Texas, um, other 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 parts of the U.S. are becoming interesting. Uh, as the value of water is, you know, becoming more apparent to people. Uh, so, as the, in other words, as the price begins to rise, we will see a lot more of those types of opportunities um, in the states. But as of now, um, you know, we're, we're not seeing it in the in the retail water space. We're seeing it more in industrial water, but less so at the uh, at the retail level. Uh, it's interesting. So, you're looking around at different parts of the world for free market solutions to water. Now, are these areas areas that 
have a scarcity of water? And if so, how does something that's being depleted, how, how does an investor benefit from that? Obviously, there's a, a smaller supply of it, uh, but eventually does it go away? I mean, at what point is there just the, the breaking point for, let's say, an area like Southern California? But what about these areas that you're talking about that are elsewhere? Are they areas that are also have a scarcity of water? Um, you Right. You, you know, a scarcity... If you're, if you're an investor, you want to screen your investment universe by identifying the places in the world where water is scarce. You know, I'm, uh, I'm in Canada today, and uh, there's plenty of water up here. There's no scarcity. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, no, no need to make a bet on Canadian water. In other words, um, the price is probably not going to skyrocket anytime soon. Uh, but, yeah, in places like the Middle East, uh, in you know, Texas and California, uh, in the drier parts of uh, South America, um, you know, China, there are huge opportunities uh, because there are major population centers that have run out of the local clean source of fresh water. Uh, and when that happens, you're, by definition, your water gets more expensive because it's either coming from farther away or it has to be treated. Both of those processes involve a significant additional cost, um, primarily because you're using a lot more energy. Well, if you're treating the water or moving the water, it takes energy and that costs money. Um, so that's that's why the value is going up in these major population centers where water is scarce, but it doesn't guarantee that the investment opportunity is there because the customers still have to be willing to pay for it. Um, Cairo is very water stressed, but customers don't pay anything for it. So we don't see any investment opportunities there right now. Um, Saudi Arabia, you have the same situation, but customers pay a high price Therefore, uh, there are there are a number of opportunities there. Um, so that's how we that's how we, that's how we screen our investment universe. Um, and as I said, there's we're seeing more and more potential opportunities in the states in terms of owning water assets. Um, and that's how, that's just how we look at it. Other people look at it in terms of how can I invest in the technology that's going to solve the water scarcity problem. Um, we don't like technology as an investment. Uh, just because the water, the water sector in general is not that well capitalized, uh, and until it is, I think the best technology out there is probably not going to find its market yet. So that's our that's our macro view on on water tech. Uh, so we like to stick to actual water producing assets, cash producing assets, um, and that's where we look in in the investment universe. Scott, I'd like to get your thoughts on desalination, looking. From a Californian's perspective, we got a ton of water, but it's a, it's in the form of ocean water. And it, in my mind, if things got bad enough, we could put a bunch of plants along the coast. And theoretically, that could be uh, a, make a dent in our solution. Um, I, I know that's probably going to be some government program. I, I'm not sure if that's something that will be an opportunity for investors if the government is really involved in that. But I just wanted to get your thoughts on desalination. Do you think that's something that would be a viable solution for the drought issue here and around the world? Absolutely. 100% it is a uh, it's a very it's a natural solution for California. And it's not just me. You, you would get that recommendation from most uh, most of the uh, the major engineering firms um, around the world in, in water would make that very same suggestion that California should be pursuing desal uh, in, a, in a big way right now. Um, and in fact, California hosted a major uh, desal conference a couple of weeks ago. The entire desalination industry came to, to LA to discuss this. And uh, unfortunately, they all walked away very disappointed because it was clear that California does not have the political will to pursue this, um, for, you know, for environmental reasons. They don't want to kill fish uh, or marine life um, by you know, basically dumping the salt back in the ocean. That's that's what happens with desal, um, and that's that's a political decision California has made. Um, you know, in, in in terms of the private sector getting involved, there are huge opportunities for the private sector. Uh, where desalination has been most successful. Uh, as, yeah, as I said, in, in, in the Persian Gulf countries, uh, Qatar, the UAE, Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia, they are 98% reliant on desalination. 
And uh, typically, up to half of the capital comes from uh, private investors. Uh, and in fact, our, our firm is, uh, you know, we, we don't do this in, in, in a large scale yet, but we, we do have investment interests in desalination uh, and desal assets. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great investment um, if you find the, the, the right opportunities. So I would, um, I would, I would be very interested, obviously, in, in, a, in pursuing that in California. But unfortunately, the state is not, um, is not there. The will is not there to, to move ahead. How does water affect the economy, the U.S. economy? Is it a major industry here, or is it just something that is mostly just a, a government faction? Good, yeah, no, good, good question. So we have 50,000 utilities in the U.S., uh, which is very unusual to be so fragmented. Um, <clears throat> most, most countries have a single ministry of water that sort of administers the, you know, the, 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 the water utility business for the whole country. We have 50,000. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, they're all government owned for the most part. I think we're, you know, there, there's some, there's some large private Water, water suppliers and water utility providers in the U.S., but they only make up about 10 to 15 percent of the uh, <clears throat> the utilities out there. So, you know, you, the vast majority of our water comes from publicly owned utilities um, that are not not necessarily profit-seeking utilities, uh, and that's why you know there's there's just a political again it's it's water and, and politics are are very intertwined. And um, it's a political decision in the U.S. to highly subsidize water. So that's why you don't see the innovation. You don't see um, California pursuing some brilliant solution uh, to the water scarcity problem right now. Because although the talent has come up with a lot of great ideas, the industry isn't at a point uh, where it can, it can accept and buy into those ideas. Um, and that's just because this is really a, this is a dinosaur uh, industry in a lot of ways. It's you know, sort of the opposite of the energy industry where you get all of the best engineering talent, um, you get all of the best ideas, and you get all the capital. Water gets, you know, 1% of the capital investment that the energy sector gets. Um, and I would argue, you know, you, you asked about how important is it to the U.S. economy. Um, it's, water is absolutely essential to growth. Uh, you know, major cities are, are very well aware of this. Las Vegas is acutely aware of this. They're investing, um, you know, a couple billion dollars to lower the intake of, uh, you know, Lake Mead so they can get more water. Um, so when you don't have it, it becomes absolutely essential to, to growth. Uh, but if you have it, you generally don't really think about it and, and you don't value it. No, and, and that's, that's really the problem. We don't have a, you know, the right valuation metrics, the right data to think about water the way we think about other things like oil. Um, so I think that's part of what that's part of what our company does, and um, I you know, generally raising awareness about uh, the the value and importance of water uh, to to grow. Now the value is relative. I I would imagine depending on where you are, because water is expensive to move. If you're in an area that has a lot of water, it should be cheap, and if you're in an area that is a desert it should be more expensive would you mind commenting on on the value of water and what it should be priced at it, based on your guys's research you know in a drought stricken area such as southern california and vegas yeah so it varies uh as you said it's it's water's local it varies uh depending on where you are um you know two cities 100 miles apart depending on whether they have a you know, are adjacent to a river or something, you they have completely different um, costs, and therefore their customers should be paying a completely different price. Um, as it turns out, we all kind of pay the same very low price, and the costs are, are what vary dramatically. Um, so, yeah, I think you're, yeah, you've you've hit on it, which is that uh, you know, in a place like LA, um, the cost of water, you know, the value of water. We've measured um, in cubic meters to be about three dollars and twenty cents. Um, that's pretty high. Uh, it's on par with like you know Israel. It's on par with so you know Jordan, some some of the driest countries in the world. Uh, and that's not what that's not what California. That's not what people in LA are paying. Um, so yeah, good example of something that uh, would need to change in order to bring the investment and the innovation that um, that part of the country needs. Uh, you know, a place like New York City, they have water flowing from the Catskill Mountains 
uh, down a, um, you know, a pipeline that was built 100 years ago, and it's been functioning perfectly. Um, that entire time is not in need of any repairs. They haven't had to spend a dime um, fixing any of that. And so New York is, is blessed with um, you know, a brilliant um, freshwater supply system. Uh, the island of Manhattan is in good shape, um, even though it doesn't have any indigenous uh, water resources. So it really, it really depends on you know, how, how your infrastructure was laid out originally, how well it transports water, and how, um, uh, you know, and, and obviously your, your resource endowment. Scott, if people want to reach out to you and learn more about you, uh, where would they go and what would they find? And, you know, where could they go to invest in this new water cost index that you have? So our company is Water Fund, and our, our website is uh, worldswaterfund.com. Um, and we have, uh, yeah, we, we have a number of different opportunities, one of which is called Blue Bonds. Um, so as I said, we're very focused on water assets that are producing water, producing cash, and uh, we have those opportunities uh, on a selective basis open to investors. So um, we, try to come, we try to find as many as we can, as many good ones as we can, um, and that's where investors can learn more about it. That's really good. And Scott, I really want to thank you for coming on the show with me today and having this conversation. It's a, it's a big issue. And, you know, people are concerned about uh, uh, inflation. And water is definitely something that is and should be inflation proof. So this is a, a really important conversation. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Ken. Appreciate it.